Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh Good morning all The respected one Our Mrs. Mitan Rusakina And other happy friends First of all, let us give thanks to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala For giving us hope so far Let me introduce myself My name is Aisha Nur Aini Who will uh, serve as moderator In the discussion of the first group Semiotic material The members of my group are Reski Dayat, Azrahan Ibrah Nabila Faisal Ramdani and Salva di Sauma Andres. Uh, before that, uh, let us uh, say basmalah together. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Okay, uh, next uh, in the uh, introduction to the materials. Uh, semiotic is a scientific discipline that studies science that exists in society. In this case, one of interesting work of semiotic as uh, as an analytical framework. Is semiotic purpose by refactoring by using a special method of meaning, namely giving meaning to the work later through the a system of multiple signs. Refactoring uh, semiotic is most appropriate to use a uh, prime because the theory of analysis uh, leads to giving meaning to later literary work. Next, uh, in delivering the material, I invite the presenter to read the material. Okay, uh, for presenters, time is yours. Okay, next, uh, my name is Rizky Dayat and I would like to explain about Semiotic by Ferdinand de Sousa and Charles Sanna Pierce. So, first is Semiotics by Ferdinand Saussure. Ferdinand Saussure described uh, semiotics in his course in general linguistics as the study of the role of science and part of social life. Uh, the implicit in this definition is relation that if the science is part of the prevailing social life. Jadi, Semiotik ini merupakan sebuah uh, ilmu yang mempelajari tentang tanda yang dimana tanda tersebut uh, sangat mudah kita jumpai di kehidupan sehari-hari, di kehidupan uh, kita sebagai makhluk sosial. Lalu kita juga sering menemukan istilah semiologi. Nah, semiologi ini sama halnya dengan semiotik. Namun semiologi ini sering digunakan oleh ilmuwan di Eropa dan salah satunya itu Ferdinand de Saussure. Lalu semiotik itu sendiri uh, yaitu merupakan sebuah definisi yang sering atau lazim dipakai oleh ilmuwan Amerika dan salah satunya yaitu Charles Sanders Peirce yang akan kita bahas di presentasi kali ini. Semiotik ataupun uh, semiologi sama-sama mempelajari tentang tanda tanda itu bermacam-macam asalnya ada tanda yang berasal dari manusia yang ber- berwujud lambang dan juga isyarat misalnya orang yang mengajukan jari misalkan di kelas berarti bermaknanya ingin bertanya terus ada tanda yang berasal dari hewan misalnya burung wak yang menukik rumah itu biasanya katanya tandanya akan mendapatkan musibah nah ada juga tanda yang diciptakan oleh manusia yang misalnya seperti rambu-rambu lalu lintas yang sering kita temui dan juga ada pula tanda yang dihasilkan oleh alam misalnya kita lihat ke langit yang mendung yang mana di sana eh, tandanya itu akan eh, atau menandakan akan Hujan akan segera turun. Seperti itu. Lalu menurut Sausur, tanda terdiri dari bunyi-bunyian dan gambar, yang mana hal itu disebut sebagai signifier atau penanda. Dan konsep dari bunyi-bunyian dan gambar tersebut disebut sebagai signify. Nah, dalam berkomunikasi, seseorang menggunakan tanda untuk mengirimkan makna tentang suatu objek. Dan orang lain, akan menginterpretasikan tanda tersebut 
objek ini bagi sausur disebut sebagai uh, referen. Nah, sausur memakai objek sebagai referen karena uh, menyebutkannya sebagai unsur tambahan dalam proses penandaan. Contoh, ketika ada seorang yang mengatakan anjing, maka uh, itu hal itu sebagai signifier atau penanda. Nah, tapi dalam saat mengatakan kata anjing tersebut menggunakan nada mengumpat, hal tersebut merupakan uh, tanda kesialan atau signified sebagai petanda. Begitulah menurut Saussure bahwa signifier uh, yaitu penanda dan signified atau petanda merupakan suatu kesatuan yang tidak dapat dipisahkan. So, signifiers are the material aspect of language. What is heard and what is written or read. A sign is a mental picture, thought or concept. So the signified is the mental aspect of language. And next, we can see here the concept of semantics or semiology from Ferdinand Saussure. They are uh, divided into two parts. The first is signify and signifier, and the second is long and parallel. Uh, so, a signifier is an understanding or impression of the meaning that is in someone's mind, while the signified is a sound image or psychological impression of the sound that arises in a, in a person's mind. Untuk contohnya, seperti signifier untuk suatu bunyi kata masjid dan berarti signifiednya adalah rumah ibadah umat Islam seperti itu next along in peril so in his book names course the linguistic general Ferdinand Sousa left about the long and parallel paradigms in the Sousa's eye Language is divided into three terms, namely uh, language, lang, and parol. Language is a language in general which concerns all languages, because linguistics is not limited to the study of one language or several languages, but includes all languages in the world that try to examine the characteristic and so similarities so the generalization can be wrong okay next is semiotic by charles sander pierce for pierce the science and its meaning is not a structure but a cognitive process called semiosis semiosis is a process of meaning and interpretation of science which goes through three stages First is uh, the first stage is the observation of the science representation aspect. This first through the five senses, and the second is uh, spontaneously linking the representation with the experience of human cognition that interprets the object, and the third is interpreting. This is interpreting the object according to his wishes. Okay, next we can see there is pure strange theory of meaning. There are representation, object, and interpretation. So the first is representation or signs. Ini merupakan bentuk fisik atau segala sesuatu yang dapat diserap oleh panca indera dan uh, representamen sendiri dibagi menjadi tiga the first is holy signs the signs based on its nature untuk contohnya seperti warna merah yang bisa dilambangkan atau dipakai sebagai suatu hal yang menunjukkan rasa cinta atau mungkin bahaya atau juga mungkin suatu larangan and the second is sin signs The signs uh, based on shape or appearance in reality. Untuk contohnya seperti suatu 
suara jeritan yang bisa berarti e, rasa senang atau mungkin kesakitan and the third is legislined a science based on generally accepted a rule uh, or a convention or a code untuk contohnya seperti rambu-rambu lalu lintas and the next is the second is objects and these objects are classified into three parts including the first is icon icon ini yaitu suatu tanda yang menyerupai uh, suatu hal atau yang diwakilkannya atau suatu tanda yang menggunakan e, kesamaan atau ciri-ciri yang sama dengan apa yang dimaksudkan e, atau mungkin bisa disebut juga sebuah tanda yang dirancang untuk mempresentasikan sumber acuan melalui simulasi atau e, persamaan untuk contohnya seperti tanda toilet tanda toilet perempuan dan laki-laki di pintu masuk toilet uh, and the second is index yaitu tanda yang sifatnya bergantung pada keberadaan uh, denotasi atau makna sebenarnya dan ini terda- terbagi menjadi tiga jenis index uh, yang pertama itu space index yang mana mengacu pada lokasi atau ruang space suatu benda makhluk dan mungkin juga peristiwa dalam hubungannya dengan e, penggunaan tanda seperti contoh anak panah yang bisa diartikan sebagai e, penjelas kata penjelas untuk menunjukkan sesuatu seperti di sana atau di situ seperti itu next is index or temporal index index ini saling menghubungkan benda-benda dari segi waktu contoh grafik waktu dengan keterangan sebelum dan sesudah dan uh, uh, personal index index ini saling menghubungkan pihak-pihak yang ambil bagian dalam sebuah situasi contoh kata ganti orang seperti saya, kami, atau dia that's it Simbol Simbol ini suatu tanda yang ditentukan oleh suatu uh, peraturan Yang mana berlaku secara umum atau ditentukan oleh uh, kesepakatan bersama nah, Simbol ini merupakan jenis tanda yang bersifat arbiter uh, dan konvensional Seperti contoh, uh, bunga mawar yang dilambangkan sebagai simbol cinta sebagai lambang berkat atau mungkin dalam agama Nasrani sebagai simbol roh kudus and next is uh, interpretation this interpretation is divided into three section the first is rim rim ini adalah tanda yang masih dapat dikembangkan karena kemungkinan ditafsirkan dalam pemaknaan yang berbeda-beda contoh orang dengan mata merah bisa diartikan mungkin sedang ngantuk atau sakit mata atau iritasi atau mungkin bangun tidur atau bisa jadi orang tersebut lagi mabuk and the third is disease signs ini adalah tanda yang interpretannya itu terdapat hubungan yang benar atau uh, yang benar ada atau tanda yang sesuai dengan fakta kenyataannya. Contoh uh, jalan yang sering uh, suatu jalan yang di mana jalan tersebut sering terjadi adanya terjadi kecelakaan maka di sana akan dipasangkan rambu-rambu yang bertulisan hati-hati rawan kecelakaan. Nah. Hati-hati orang ini sesuai dengan 
fakta atau kenyataan yang terjadi di jalan tersebut itu uh, disesai lalu yang terakhir adalah argument argument ini merupakan tanda yang sifat interpreternya berlaku secara umum atau tanda yang berisi alasan tentang sesuatu hal contoh tanda larangan merokok di SPBU nah alasan karena ada tanda tersebut karena SPBU merupakan tempat yang mudah terbakar mungkin seperti itu that's it about uh, the semiotic by Ferdinand Saucer and also from Charles Sander Pierce okay, thank you and uh, materi selanjutnya akan dilanjutkan oleh partner saya, terima kasih okay, now I will explain about Roman Jacobson and Lewis Roman Jacobson was the first to attempt to explain the communication of literary text Jacobson's influence on semiotics dates back to the 20th century explain the existence of different language functions which are forming factors in each type of verbal communication there are addresser, message, address, context, code, and contact talking about Jacobson's view it can be stated uh, that for him language has six kinds of functions there are differential functions or message referrer to emotive function or revealing the, the state of speech three connective functions expressing the speaker's wishes that are directly or immediately carried out or thought by a listener four metalling well functions explanation about explanation of the password or codes or code used five fantastic function opening forming maintaining relationships or contacts between readers and listeners uh, six poetic functions message encoder Jacobson is one of the theorists who first tried to explain the process of communication of literary text in his famous articles linguistics and poetics Jacobson describes the different function of language which are the shaping factors in each type of verbal communication address or sender sends a message to an address or send to be operative the message requires context so that is understood by the un- by the sender and can be verbalized the code in full or at least partially for the sender and send or in other words for the coder and meaning and finally a contact a physical channel and psychological connection between the sender send allowing both to enter and be in communication next i will explain about louis helms life developing a bipartisan system or dialect system is a feature of the assurance system helms life's opinion on saucer semiology is in upholding the need for a science that studies how signs live and function in society. According to him, a sign not only contains an internal relationship between the material aspect and mental concept, but also contains a relationship between itself and a wider system outside itself. Helps Labs is a form of connecting signs in a text that is equivalent as a semantic fact to produce its semiotic picture. He also adds from Salisbury semiotics by paying attention to the nature of a sign in its logical connection with other signs. As a reconstruction called scientific semiotic, metasemiotics is the first systemic reconstruction which contacts, message, addresser, address, contact, and code. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh My name is Faisal Ramdan and I would like to describe about algebra's general premise and Rolander has thought about semiotics I've 
first we have Ramos and his theory about structural narrative analysis. And there, and there is the concept of actance that term referred to the narrative or manuscript or uh, actors. That is a term that referred to general category such as human action or something something else uh, concept of attacks is itself is the smallest narrative unit in the text in, semi- in semiotics text is a sign system that al- always consists of two structural elements at first it is the, the, the external structure seen as a form of text that is always recognizable and readily accessible for explicit text form and the second inner structure meaning the basic system of fundamental values embedded in a text and the system of norms values and attitudes that are universal in the text or implied text form both of the structures determine the actant or a function and at the next slide we have the uh, actant function there is a uh, sixth actant function according to Algidras Julian Remus the first uh, actant is the senator or sender it was a story mover reference that give birth to the rules, values, and ideology of the text. The second have receiver has the intent of receiving the value from the destination or object where the destination assigned the value. And then finally we have the subject. Subject has the intention of playing the main role in the narrative. And then object Object has a purpose of something or someone that uh, the subject wants to achieve or the goal. Then helper. Helper is uh, known as a support that intend to support the subject to achieve its goal or the object itself. And then the last we have opposant or blocker or obstacle. Or something something else uh, it intends to support the subject to achieve its goal it was the object to and then we move to the, to the second uh, the second person it is Roland Barthes uh, and his theory about order of sig- signific- signification including the denotation connotation and pathologies the process of meaning occurs in, in two stages according to Roland Marthas the first uh, process as what Sosurian said uh, the process of meaning it was detonation or primary meaning or true meaning is the first level of signification system but Ryan Barthes also say that uh, in his theory, in the order of signification, there is a connotation system or connotation means. It was the secondary meaning or additional meaning connected with culture. It's the second level which he calls met- meta language or extension of meaning. This is caused by mythologies process of how culture explains aspect of reality and natural phenomena. For example, when we uh, read a sentence like this, mathematics is a piece of cake. The denotative system is a, re- a, real, pi- uh, a real piece of cake. Uh, we can uh, assume that real piece of cake uh, a piece of cake is a real piece of cake means a real piece of cake nothing nothing else but in connotative system a 
real, uh, a piece of cake indicate that something that referred to is easy. Then the connotative sign or a piece of cake become mythologies or fake assumptions of uh, or connotative meaning as if it replaced the notative meaning. Maybe that's all for me. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. The term social semiotics was introduced by Halliday. Halliday pr- proposes that language cannot be separated from society. He views language as a se- social semiotics in which language, the means by which people interact, must be considered in a social context. Language in society is an undefined concept and needs to be investigated as a whole. Halliday points out that individual human beings become part of the group through language. Holiday adds that a society does not consist of participants, but of relations, and these relations define a social world. Holiday also states that our environment is shaped by the culture, and the condition under which we learn language are culturally determined. This point is significant at two interconnected levels. One, a matter of linguistic environment, which is itself of the culture, which too shapes our behavior patterns and great deal of our behavior is then mediated through language. Thus, language is interdependent with cultural context and cannot be represented by single district system. Instead, it has to be investigated within a socio-semiotics framework. Or, as Halliday puts it, a social reality or a culture is itself an edifice of meaning, a semiotic construct. In this perspective, language is one of the one of the semiotic systems that constitute a culture, one that is distinctive and in that it also uh, reserves as co- encoding system of many thrown up all of others. This in summary terms is what is intended by the formulation of language as social semiotics. It means interpreting language within a socio-cultural context to which the culture itself is interpreted in semiotic terms. As an information system, if that terminology is separate. This next one I will explain about the Umberto Echo's theory of semiotics. Echo argues that the meaning of signals or signs is not necessarily determined by whether they refer to actual objects, and he explained that the existence of object to which signals or signs may correspond is not necessary condition for their signification. Echo also criticizes the notion that a topology of sign might clarify the nature of sign function, arguing instead that any, any t- topology of sign may fail explain how different kinds of sign may share the same modes of production. Echo thus argues that the correct approach to developing a unified semiotic theory should not be proposed by a typology of signs, but should be to provide a method of investigating how sign typos may function as signs and to provide a meaning of understanding how sign echo might produce and interpret it. According to Echo, a general semiotic theory should include not only the theory of how codes might establish rules or system or signification, but the theory of how signs might be produ- produced and interpreted. The theory of code may clarify aspects of signification, while a theory of sign production may clarify aspects of communication. Echo defines signification as the semiotic event whereby a sign stands for something, and he defines communication as the transmission of information from a source to a destination. Communication is made possible by existence of a code or by a system of signification. Without a code or system of signification, there is no set of rules to determine how the expression of signs is to be correlated with their contents. The use of a code or a system of signification
education in order to correlate the expression and content of science may be necessarily in order to establish any form of communication. Echo explained that semiotics may involve many different areas of research, such as eusemiotics, paralinguistics, and kinetics, proxemics, etc. Okay, this topic is Levator's theory of semiotics. The previous explanation has mentioned, mentioned it that Levator semiotic has four steps that must be passed, which will be described as follows. Number one, indirect expression in reading poetry and vocabulary. The used in poetry uh, there is no meaning that it describe it directly then certainly the use of word in poetry has a meaning confi- confined by figuring out uh, or presupposing of course to- touch the process of meaning for each the individuals as reporters put in put it in his book entitled Semiotic of Poetry, Poetry Changes from Time to Time, the change was caused by difference, differences in our in aesthetic concept and the evolution of this. However, there is one thing that has not changed, namely that poetry is an indirect expression according to efforts. Indirect expression is caused by three things, namely displacing, namely displacing and distorting and creation of meanings. Uh, displacing, distorting, and creating of meaning. Uh, displacing what is displacing displacing of meaning is a change in the meaning of the word in a poem without using their true meanings usually such poetry as figure of speech the figure of speech use the substitution uh, of meaning is metonymy okay metonymy and metaphor in Pradopo's book, uh, Alter Burnt explained that metaphor is a figure, figure of speech that that some something uh, as the same things as something else that actually has no connection at all. Metonymy is a metaphor uh, for changing names such as a uh, Sungai Ciliwu, which was renamed as Sungai Kesayangan in Toto Sudarto Bakhtiar poems. Poems, okay. Uh, number eh, uh, point two is destruction or deficient of meaning or distorting meaning. In most uh, of the poem, the word of sentence used often have a deficient in meaning which is caused by their things according to reference, namely ambiguity, contradiction, and nonsense. nonsense. Ambiguity can occur in words, press, and sentence or discourses caused by the emergency of different interpret- interpretation. Interpretation according to the content contradiction is the paradoxical para, okay paradoxical use of word irony and antithesis. Meanwhile, nonsense are words that have no meaning according to the dictionary but have a occult uh, meaning according to the content. Okay, the point three is creation of meaning or creating meaning. The creating of New meanings of course because it is caused by the presence of visual form which include rhyme engagement and typography. This means that the visualization in poetry able to create a new meaning such or such as a rhyme engagement and typography that create new meaning in poetry. So that in the meaning of poetry three and uh, there there is a new meaning creating meaning okay uh, number two is point two. Oh no no number two is heuristic and hermetics uh, number one number one is in indirect expression uh, now uh, number two heuristic and hermetics 
Heuristic is the first stage of reading the poem by the reader, where in this first stage, the reading of the text is accordance with syntaxis, morphological, normative, and semantic grammar. This means uh, that is a heuristic reading that the, the that takes the products as a whole according to normative grammar with a semiotic system everything related to sign from the mimetic um, mimetic uh, level to the higher level of meaning in holistic reading uh, this is referred to as the first stage of reading because the reader is required to understand and poem as whole this means uh, that is first stack the reader and they read on the outside before understanding the second stack or what is called hermetics. In this first stack, the decoding process occurs by reading the text as whole to get an overall meaning. Holistic reading is not enough to understand and capture the real meaning in poetry. Therefore, a hermetic stage is needed or called uh, the second stack read, second stage reading. In hermetic reading, of course, it cannot be spared from the heuristic uh, reading stage, but must be passed first because heuristic is process process of reading the first stage to find out the meaning of the whole text, a whole which uh, is only understood by the outside. Uh, hermetic uh, as a con continual. Uh, continuation of the previous holistic stage present as more in in-depth and detailed understanding hermetic is also now a second or right retroactive reading uh, this means that the reader conducts an a depth search for meaning based on the literary conversation convention okay literary convention uh, the decoding process occurs in this stage because it uh, because in the first stage where the reader has read the whole text of talk uh, it is uh, still in the early stage in the hermetic stage the reader is better able to understand the text future and in depth everything that is in the uh, holistic stage the reader of something that is not coherent between uh, words of sentence uh, in this stage, find fact uh, uh, that uh, relate to each other, readers begin to be able to understand what uh, initially gets uh, an, an ambigu ambiguous meaning or meaning to become clear. Okay, point three is matrix, variant, and mod model. Poetry becomes a, a dream for a poet of love and life, however. Uh, in its development, the matrix uh, become, become a model which the transformed uh, into variant by a poet in poet in the form of of poetry. Referred in this in his book entitled Semiotic of Poetry says, uh, Referred says that his matrix is in the form of the word. A combination of word part of simple sentence it means that the matrix in literary work especially poetry determines its pure beauty uh, because it met matrix is place uh, or wrap uh, by a model which is usually a figure of speech to describe the words in the poem just uh, the beauty of the matrix is poetry is very 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 uh, this this is if this is it because uh, the matrix is not clearly uh, what I mean needs a hermetic interpretation describe in poetry a variant form uh, that explain the matrix in poetry in a straightforward and clear manner uh, in order to open the point so that I can be easily understood in the uh, Concretization of poetry, the metric or keyword must be such. Uh, the keyword are words uh, that are the key to the considers interpreting interpretation uh, of the poem. This means that matrix is uh, the keyword uh, contained in the poetry text. Be that become models in the world uh, of the poem are transformed into variants. Uh, number four, hippogram or in 
or textual relationship. To find out the meaning in poetry, another way is needed, namely by means of a hippogram or looking at the meaning of the relationship between poem in, the, in literary text. Referred in protocol cell that the poem is a response to be to the previous poem. It means uh, that one rhyme with another is an answer to the previous rhyme which makes the poem experience ambiguity, uh, contradiction, and nonsense. Uh, Rayford says the rhyme, the rhyme is an answer or response to an earlier rhyme. Without placing the poem in historical order, the true meanings of the poem will not be re- re- revealed According to referred a uh, quote in his book, Theo believes that literary works are not born in a cultural vacuum. A literary work ex- exists uh, as a means of communication, the meaning which can be in the form of definition or response from previous literary works. This means the literary works are born to from social phenomena and social conflict from this phenomena, so that the work in mentioned that uh, literary works uh, are not born in cultural vacuum, but from all form of social problems that are pure poured into literary work. So that literary work has have a implied meaning that must be explored in deep with the exciting uh, symptoms and conflicts the that poem that that poet poet that poet absorb uh, and appreciates appreciate the event that are transformed into poetry this transformation the, the this transformation is referred to as a hippogram by reference in other in another sense a hippogram is a science system that contains at least a statement that can be as big a text that can can only be potential so that it can be seen the linguistic level of it can be actual to so that it can be seen in the previous text so it can be interpreted that the hippogram is a text that cannot be spared from the previous text which is the background for the creation of the new text okay maybe uh, enough uh, the uh, topic just the presentation of our group uh, let's say hamdalah alhamdulillah robbil alamin I ask the moderator apologies for the shortcoming and mistakes. Uh, thank you so much. Wabillahi taufiq wal hidayah. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. See you and bye bye.